Suspense. Present tonight, two stars, Mr. Charles Lawton and Miss June Havoc in Blind Date, a suspense play produced and edited by William Spear. And now, with Blind Date, and with the performances of Charles Lawton and June Havoc, it hopes once again to keep you in suspense. <sighs> the DeMarcos and Mamie had said goodbye. That left me alone backstage. I'm always late anyway. Eight acts on the bill, and I'm always the last to leave the theater. Say, just what do you mean coming into a lady's dressing room without knocking? <laughs> Hi, cutie. Uh, I never heard of a call boy who didn't know how to say, are you decent? Oh, relax, relax, take it easy. We can't all be double jointed. All right, what do you want? He's outside. Who is outside? Uh, some John you won't like says he's got a date with you. Oh, baby, you're closing tonight. Tomorrow you'll be in far off Detroit. Then you'll wish you'd done the loop with me once. Come on, let you and me do our own circuit well, tonight. I huh? have a date, thank you. Oh. Now, will you go out and tell him to come in, if you please? You can do better than him. Yeah? Yeah. Me. Oh, for... Oh, you know, you got real talent, honey. You need somebody to watch out for you. In the profession, I mean. Now, what's a cute little trick like you taking fourth billing to a lot of hoofers no. and... Yeah. Oh, Gloria, baby, this is your last night. <laughs> and I told you before, I don't like to be touched by you or anybody else. Hey, I'm beginning to think you mean it. Get out of here. Okay, okay. Your stage door, Johnny, ain't gonna be no improvement. Believe me. The idea, the very idea. Doggone it, where did I put that? <clears throat> I believe I'm on time. The clock on the regular tower has just struck 11. I'm Vincent Hawthorne. Oh, yes, she I'm... She walks in beauty uh, like the night of cloudless climes and starry skies. Huh? Come again? I'm not what you expected, of course well, not. Well, I'll... Won't you come in, Mr... Uh... Hawthorne. Here, let me take your hat, Mr. Oh, Hawthorne. You. I'll only be a minute. I'm leaving Chicago. I close tonight, you know. Detroit tomorrow. I was delayed at packing and all. I'm not quite dressed. <laughs> Now, that props, anyway. A theatrical trunk. This is a big <clears throat> thrill to me. Gloria Le Fay. Theater. Rush. Gloria Le Fay. Trends in bends. Yeah, that's me. Well, well, this is my first experience in meeting an artist. Well, really? Gloria. It's a lovely name, Gloria. It fits you. You're a very lovely girl. Well, I, I, I... She had a woman's mouth with all its pearls complete. And for her eyes, what could such eyes do there? But weep and weep that they were born so fair. Huh? Well, it's something of your own. Oh, I only wish it were. That's a narrative poem of Keats about a woman who turned into a serpent. Well, gee, that's a cheerful little earful, I must say. And what do you got there? That's a flower, a rose for you, here. Oh, well, thanks. Yeah, I like roses. I thought it'd look nice in your hair, Gloria. Oh, yeah, well, thanks. Thanks a lot. That's real nice. For your hair, yes. Okay. And this. Now, this is something for both of us. Is that whiskey? No, no, uh, hardly. It's wine. It's Chablis. It is a fine bouquet. <laughs> Should lend a note of cheer to our little dressing room. Hmm? And two glasses. See, I thought of everything. Um, fine wine should always be sipped from crystal, don't you think? I plan on going out. And then... Oh, you're certainly, but I thought... I'll only be a minute. I'll, I'll finish dressing behind the screen. Same, uh, Mr. Hawthorne. Oh, yes? What's your first name? Vincent, my dear. Oh, say, Vincent. Oh, thank you. Vincent, just so we get everything clear on both sides, I... Well, it, <laughs> it's the funny situation, you see, because I don't quite know Are how you to... concerned because we are having what is called a blind date? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, you're in my mind. Mm -hmm. I just wanted it to be understood on both sides that I am not in the of habit. Of course not. But, but lately, I've, I've been thinking that after all, how is an artiste like myself, who spent practically all of her life training for a profession and then finally goes out on the road since, since vaudeville's coming back now, you know... How's she ever going to meet people? Yeah. You get the point? Certainly. I, of course, I understand that completely. We'll just have our little midnight supper. I was coming to that. Well. When I was a little girl... Say, by the way, did you ever catch an act called Diane? Diane? I'm not a positive. I... Well, you'd hardly have forgotten her if you had. 
Diane was my mother. Oh, indeed. She was an... Uh, an acrobatic uh, dancer, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's almost entirely her act that I'm doing. Really? Well, when we were playing Chicago once, when I was a little girl, we went to a little restaurant off the Gold Coast which enjoyed largely theatrical clientele. Mm -hmm. It's called Gregory's. Mm -hmm. I thought we'd go there. Are you game, Mr. Hawthorne? It sounds delightful. <clears throat> uh, you, you, you say that your mother is dead? Yes. Diane died three months ago. I'm terribly, terribly sorry, my dear. Well, thanks. I'm sorry. <clears throat> hey, say the You were very close to your mother, weren't you? She was an artiste, too. And she taught you how to accomplish all of those, uh, those uh, remarkable feats that you've been performing on the stage. Mm. Diane taught me everything I know. It's really remarkable uh, what, what you do at the end of your um, act. When you stand on that chair and bend all the way back so slowly and then take the goblet of wine with your teeth and drink it. Well, thank you. I've worked hard. Of course, either you are double-jointed or you're not. Of course. Uh, what did she die of? You might say that when Vaudeville began to die, Mother began to die, yeah, too. Yeah. It wasn't the money, but with radio and you see you have to see a dancer and uh, radio in view of those circumstances you could almost say that your mother was uh murdered <laughs> say where do you live i was born in london london we were thinking about playing australia once london is a great many miles from australia Gee, gloria i'd sure like to get over to london they say australia is london great. is a very lonely Palladium, I'll bet that's the big... It's full of lonely people. Oh, say, let's not... The world is full of lonely people, Gloria. In your short lifetime, has that fact come to your attention? Well, really, that kind of talk can ruin an evening. If you're going to talk like that, I, I, I don't know about us. Well, here we... Hey, what are you doing? Put away that knife. I'm just opening our bottle, Gloria. Oh, I told you, I, I don't want to drink here. I want to go to Gregory's. Come on. Come on, let's put the show on the road. Well, here's one for the road. A glass of wine will do us both good. No. I don't like the looks of that knife. Nobody needs a knife that big to open a bottle with. This is a trick knife, see? <laughs> you press a little button and the knife's gone. Just like that, it disappears into the handle. Well, I don't like it. People get hurt with knives. No, no, you're wrong. You're wrong about that. People get... Uh, 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 knives are a very handy instrument. Oh. Well, a good knife is hard to find. A good knife is a friend, Gloria. The only <laughs> friend you can depend on sometimes. They say steel is cold, but it's really warm. It's warm as the human body. Well, just for your information, I don't like your knife, and while we're at it, I don't think I like you either. I'm very I sorry, don't... Gloria. I'm sorry that my knife frightened you. I don't know. I think maybe you'd better go. And Please, I... Gloria, don't be angry with me. I'm most anxious to take you to Gregory's, I... where you once went with your mother many, many years ago. I don't know. I think... And we'd have I... something that you didn't have at that time, champagne. Huh? Well, let... Quiet corner by candlelight, there'll be music... I... <laughs> See, what does a girl do when she draws a, a gentleman like you, huh? Why, she has a little glass of wine to celebrate. <laughs> I... <laughs> uh... <laughs> good, good, here we go. Uh... <clears throat> you haven't said anything about my dress. It's one for you, Thanks. one for me. All right. Here's to a pleasant evening, Vin Vincent. No, Gloria. Here's to us. Well, okay, then. Here, here's to us. Oh, yeah, that's a little better. That's nice. <clears throat> Vincent, I I'd like to ask you a personal question. Certainly. Uh, what does somebody like you do for a living? Oh, I was a part of Rembrandt and Silvers. Yeah? Sounds like a soft shoe. <laughs> no, they're wine merchants. Oh, what? Gloria, when you bend back like you do and you drink out of that glass, uh -huh. is that wine you drink? Oh, of course not. That's only colored water. Oh. <laughs> Did you know that the cork in the bottle is sometimes more expensive than the wine itself? Hmm. You don't say. Yes, it's, it's imported from Spain, you know. Imported, that, that's what costs the money, you see. Hmm. Why, what? You know, another thing I have wondered about... Is it true uh, that it's bad luck to whistle in a dressing room? Oh, that's silly. That's a chorus girl superstition. <laughs> Artists say they don't worry about that. Oh, I see. I I'm most grateful that you answered my note this afternoon. Vincent, why did you send the note to me? 
with those six beautiful Cardoza sisters on the same bill. I thought them very ordinary girls. They weren't the least beautiful, not, not beautiful like you. No? Well, no. What well, made I... you answer my note? I had three birds this morning. Birds? Uh-huh. Tea leaves. Oh, yes. That well, means good luck, you know. <laughs> and then, then when I got your note, naturally, I took it to Mamie. She does mm. handwriting, too. Yeah. And she said, you must be a fine gentleman. And otherwise, I wouldn't have answered you because I've never had a blind date before. Then I'm most grateful to Mamie. Well, I... <clears throat> well, I think it's about time we left. Oh, I don't know, Gloria. Yeah, I, I, um, I see that you have a portable phonograph. Right, you no. travel with that... Uh... That's an old one. It's no good. It doesn't work too well. I've got to have it fixed. I, I'm very fond of music, Gloria. What, what, what have you got? It here? doesn't work, well, honestly. Let's try one before we leave. Hey, well, Mr. Well, well, look, well, now... Well, I... What about this one? Moonlight Madonna. Why, that's the music you use in your act. It's Just play old, it. I told you, that phonograph doesn't work. Oh, come on. Why didn't you... Come on, let's... You're wrong, Gloria. I see that... That works fine, oh. you see. All right, now, come on, I've finished my drink. Let's go. Could we have a, another one and listen to the record? No. I've had enough, and, and you've had enough, too, so let's, let's Must get Must you wear that fur piece? For your information, Mr. Wise Guy, this fur piece was given to Diane by Mr. Nat Kalsheim of the Morris office and is practically unobtainable on today's market. You just can't get it from how it is. I can wear this anywhere, anywhere at all. What I mean, Gloria, is that it doesn't do you justice. Nothing, nothing is beautiful enough for a girl with lips. Don't you touch me. Oh. Don't you ever touch me, see? You, 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 you shouldn't have done that. When I was a little girl, one night I was standing in the wings watching Diane and a stagehand kissed me on the neck and I just... Well, he's still carrying the scar in his forehead. I took the heel on my shoe and I, I hit him. Mm. And he... Listen, don't you ever try to touch me again, see? Never. Mm -hmm. Come on, now. We had our wine and it's a quarter after 11 and we're going to go. We're going right now, do you we understand? We didn't hear the rest of this record, Gloria. You get out. You get out of my dressing room. I do not want to leave yet, Gloria. You... I'll show you, you... Hey! What are you... What are you... Well, it's no use. I have the key. You have... Bill is the name of the stage Norman that I met coming in. Yeah. A liberal gratuity, a gentle hint, and he obligingly left you and me alone. Mm. Gloria. And there we were. In the dressing room. Backstage in that empty theater. Mr. Hawthorne, his knife, and me. Bringing you Mr. Charles Lawton and Miss June Havoc in Blind Date. Tonight's production in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. And now brings back to our Hollywood soundstage, Charles Lawton and June Havoc in Blind Date. A tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspend. Get out. Get out of my dressing there room. There's no reason to be afraid of me, Gloria. You take your while and sit down and listen to the music. Yeah. I don't want it. Now, why did you do that? Because I, I don't want to have another drink here. I want to leave. Unlock that now, door. Don't you be impatient, Gloria. We'll leave in a minute. Well, why can't we leave now? I, I want to get out for for some fresh air. You aren't frightened? No, I'm not. I mean, why, 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 why are you... You uh... promised to take me to Gregory's for supper. I've done four shows a day for six days, and I'd like to relax, and t tomorrow I've got to go... Of would. Listen, I'll... I'll even change my fur piece, Mr. Hawthorne. The... Vincent. You know, Gloria, loneliness is a terrible thing. You can wander in a city of a million people and yet have no one to speak with. And you wander and you think there is no cure for loneliness. And there is a cure. Right. As I watched you there dancing on the stage, I knew that loneliness has a cure. Just a simple kiss huh? will banish loneliness forever. Well, you're not going to kiss me. Right. I'll tell you that much. I don't care how lonely you are. Well, I'm sick of this record, <laughs> I wish I'd never answered your note, I'll tell you that much. But you did answer it, and here we are. Well, a girl can make a mistake, No, Gloria, you, know. you didn't make a mistake. I'm a humble man, and I apologize to you. 
Unlock the door. I have been studying you, Gloria, ever since I came into the dressing room tonight. There is more to you than just a pretty face. Oh, that kind of talk doesn't impress me. That kind of talk will get you exactly nowhere. Unlock the door. Now, what if I told you that you'd successfully passed the test? I really have been testing. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, when first I saw you six days ago, I knew there was a lot more to you than just a pretty face, and that's why I've been to see you dance every day. I wanted to make sure, and I came here tonight to test you. Well, what do you mean when by When I tried that? to kiss you, that was the test. I had to find out what you were like. Hmm. A man has to be careful, too, about a girl, I mean. And when you wouldn't let me kiss you, I knew you were someone that I could... Oh, oh, oh Gloria. Yeah, I don't get you at all. Now, now you're almost as if you were going to cry. I have a confession, Gloria. I have cried a great deal in my life. Really? Have you really? A very great deal. Huh. Well, well then, look, now that I've passed your test, you, you know what kind of a girl I am, don't you? I know exactly what kind of a girl you are, Gloria. All, all right, and then we understand uh, each again, other. I know you and you know me. All right, then, then, come on, let's put the show on the road. There is just one thing. What? It's your dress. What? So now it's my dress, is it? Yes. First it was, was with my fur piece, and now it's my it's dress. It's a very, very beautiful dress, but before we go out, I would like to see you for the last time in the costume you wear for your act. Oh, you the would. Just one, what do you think? I like the green one best with the golden I'm... spotlight. Well, I'm... it's not here. I've already sent the trunk to the station. And... I don't believe that. What's this, then? That's, that's my other trunk. You give me the key, will you? I will All not. All right, then I'll open it my own way. No. <gasps> Put the knife away, I told will you? you, Gloria, a knife is a very handy instrument. It's a very handy instrument to stop have. Stop that, will you? Stop that. You're going to break the lock. Get, get away from that trunk. Of... <gasps> Don't you do that. Don't you ever try to take my knife away from me. I... Don't you ever try to take my knife away from me. I, I ask you to do a simple little thing. I ask you to wear your costume for me because you look very pretty in it. A simple thing like that would take only a minute of your time. You say it's packed and shipped, but I don't think it is. I'm going to find out whether it is. It's no, all no, right. I, I am going to find out. I... Oh. There, I've got it. And here's the dress right on top. Your beautiful green well, I won't costume. put it on now. Do you hear me? I won't put it on for you or for anybody else. And on top of everything else, you've broken my trunk. Yeah, I just have that lock. Go behind that screen and put it on. I will not. Oh. <gasps> All right, all right, all right. I'll, I'll put it on. That's a good girl. You know, Gloria, I didn't mean anything by showing you my knife. It's only just that I want to see you. I want to see you exactly as you look when you're performing on the stage. You're so beautiful, Gloria. Your eyes are greener than the sea. You're so lovely. Huh. And all that isn't going to make me forget that knife or what you've done, either. I, I'm just a humble man. I'm a human being the same as you are, but I'm only lonely, Gloria. I'm ah. terribly, unendurably lonely. You've got friends, all oh, right. How does that go? I have no friends, said Lamia. No, not one. My presence in wide Corinth hardly known. My parents' bones are in their dusty urns, sepulchred where no kindly incense burns. Seeing all their luckless race are dead, save me. And I neglect the holy rite for thee. Have you put on the costume? Yeah. Well, now, here it is. All right, now, you, you take your look, Mr. Hawthorne. Just... Well... That's lovely. It is. All right, lovely. all right, then. Then I can. Yeah. What are you? What are you doing? Well, how can you perform without music? Perform? Why else would I ask you to put on your costume? You're going to dance for me. I'm not putting on a special act for anybody. You, you're you're not... you, 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 you can't imagine the effect that this has on me. It is the way you twist and turn slowly and silently, so slow, so lovely. And so alone. Oh, so very much alone. Alone? Huh? How could I be alone in a, in a theater full of you people? You can be alone in a city of a million people. You had no one in that theater, Gloria, even though it was crowded. Yeah. And now here in your dressing room, you have me to watch you, and you can perform for me alone. Oh. Hey, what's the idea of turning off the lights? All, all, all but the ones around your mirror. You see, that's your spotlight. Oh, You're on stage. Now that's for me and no oh. one else. Oh. Don't you scream again. Don't you scream whatever you do. That upsets me. Look, Vincent, if, if 
I do my act for you, if I do it just the way I do it on the stage, only, only this time just for you, if I do it for you like that, will you please go away? Yes, yes, Gloria, that's all I want you to do. I just want you to do it as if you were on the stage. All right, all right, then. Sure. Sure. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh, that's right. Oh, that's graceful. Oh, that's so graceful. Turn a twist. Now down. Down, 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 down. So, go slowly, go slowly. Sorry. Why can't you do that for me? Why you went clumsy in the theater when all those other people were I'm sorry, watching? Honest, I'm sorry, it's such a small room, and when I do my kicks, I can't. You, never mind, never mind. You go on, will you? No, go on. No, no, no. That's right. Oh, slowly, slowly. Please remember to do it slowly. I don't know what you're going to do, and I don't know what it is. I just can't go on to my act anymore. I can't do it, I can't. I'm a decent, self-respecting girl, and I accepted your invitation. I thought you were going to be nice because you're a handwriter. You got me so I don't know what you do or say. I just can't see the please. You know, why can't you go away? Why don't you go out of my dressing room and leave me alone? I hate you. I hate you. I, you hate me. You hate me. I knew that when I came in that door tonight that you hated me. And I'm accustomed to being hated. And let me tell you something. Every girl with a nice dress and a pretty face hates me, Gloria. I don't care anymore. I was lonely. I went to the theater. I saw you there on the stage. I thought you were beautiful. I thought if I could see you alone in the same costume that you wear it just for me and perform just for me, that I wouldn't be lonely anymore. That would be enough. But, but it isn't enough. No, no, don't. Don't. Don't, don't, don't you come near me. Don't you touch me. A kiss I... is the cheapest thing in the world. No, no, no. Now, kiss means nothing to you. To, be, to me, it means oh, everything. No, no, A stay. kiss would cure my loneliness, I'll Gloria. I'll never kiss you. I'll I tell think you. you will. I I'll think you will. My knife. Oh, please, please. Now then, just tilt your head. Oh, no. That's right. Now. Vincent, darling. What you say? I said, what, darling. Why did you say that? What, would you, what did you say if I really kissed you, what huh? You mean? And when you said it, a kiss means everything to you. Do you want me to really kiss you? I can't believe it. Oh, I, I'd kiss you. Really, I would, but... but. What? No, I'm... I'm afraid of your knife. Do you actually want to kiss me? Yes, I guess. But, but the knife scares oh, me. Oh, I never meant to use that, Gloria. Here, you take it. Hmm. Now... I'll kill you! I'll kill you! What have I done? What have I done? Oh, what have I done? <laughs> looking for him ever since he left London. They knew all about him. So they let me go. Self-defense. Loneliness is a terrible thing, he said. Well, no matter how lonesome I get, I'll never have another blind date as long as I live. Suspense. Tonight's stars, Charles Lawton and June Havoc in Blind Date. Mr. Lawton, if you'll release Miss Havoc from your clutches, I'd like to get her in mine. From clutches to cliches. Well, <laughs> we might say that, yes, All Mr. Right, Lawton. Mr. Wilcox, I'll do that. <laughs> but I may say that it's being done with a great deal of reluctance, June. Thank you. 
Next Thursday, as we say... A tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. Tonight's suspense play was produced and edited by William Spear and directed by Norman MacDonald. Music for suspense is composed by Lucian Morawieck and conducted by Lud Bluskin. Blind Date was a radio play by E. Jack Newman and Harrison Negley. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.